Hello everyone, and welcome back to Priest Verified. My name is Father Michael Aguino. I'm a Catholic priest and a high school teacher at Crystal Ray Tampa in Florida. Today, we're going to talk about preparing for the Sacrament of Confession for high school students. I want to just start out by acknowledging that confession is one of those topics that often makes us feel unsure, uneasy, and we're not so excited about. But I think when we're, all, when we're able to look at examples in life and really try to understand what it means, it can take something that can feel uneasy and we can say, oh, that makes sense. I can understand that and I know why this is something good, why this is good for me to do. So let's take a look at this episode from The Simpsons. I'd like you to just take a look at this clip and think about a word, a phrase, something that comes to mind that you'd like to discuss or to say, hmm, that makes me think about this regarding the sacrament of confession. Let's take a look. But if you do break a rule, you can always find absolution in the sacrament of confession. Wait, 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 wait. No matter what I did, no matter how many people lost their pensions, it's forgiven like that? If you truly repent, then yes. Okay, let's make some magic here. I wiped a booger on your shirt, I made a dog and a cat kiss, I swiped a bolted down TV from a Holiday Inn, I coveted the wife in Jaws 2, I lied to a waiter, I masturbated 8 billion times, and I have no plans to stop masturbating in the future. Woohoo! I'm clean! In your face, Lord! Um, uh, not quite, Mr. Simpson. I... So we're gonna stop that right there. I think that's a pretty interesting thing to say. That's not quite all of it. And so, let's take a look. Very often when we talk about confession, we think of creating a laundry list of stuff and trying to recall everything. And while that's an important part of it, I think sometimes that that can be something which can inhibit the experience of receiving the mercy of God. And we look at that list and we go, oh my God, I gotta say that? I gotta talk about that? Well, very often, we, when talking about confessions, on social media, confessions happen all the time. People just pour their hearts out there talking about a boyfriend that did it wrong to them or something that happened by somebody else, or on Twitter, we, or whether it be Snapchat or whatnot, we capture things and we share them. And then we say afterwards, oh boy, should I have shared that? Confession is one of those places where we know that there's the integrity of the sacrament of confession and that nothing that is shared inside of the confessional is ever shared outside of the confessional. And yes, you could say there is an app for that to help us with confession, which you can download from the iTunes store. It's called the Confession app. And it's pretty simple and easy to use. And this isn't a promo video for the Confession app, but if it helps you, then great. So it's important that we try not to skirt around an issue, that we try to attack it head on. And that when something's tough, that we try to say, look, this is what I did. I know it was wrong and I'm sorry about it, okay? Now I need to move on. And God's like, yes, exactly. And it's important for us to confess all, to not hold back. Because if we look at a wound when we get hurt, very often when we get a scrape, if we don't take care of it, if we don't put some alcohol on it or wash it, it's gonna, it's gonna possibly get infected. And if it does, then it could cause for a greater intervention that's needed by doctors and medical personnel. But we know confession is kind of like that opportunity where we have to wash out that wound and then a bandage is placed on it so it can heal. The, the effects of it are still there, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the sacrament, that the germ causing that wound or infestering that wound is gone. And sometimes people, as a priest, people will show up and they'll say, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been 50 years since I've been to confession. Okay, what would you like to confess? And they go, Nah, I don't know. I've been pretty good. And I'm saying, man, seriously? I go to confession quite often and I got a lot to confess. But it's not a judgment. But at the same time, remember, nobody's perfect. 
even the greatest of saints were sinners. And that in this experience, it's not just you and the priest, but it's you encountering Jesus. It's you encountering a friend who loves you, who died for you, who suffered for you, who says, I hope I go to prepare a place for you. So it's a coming back to Jesus moment. Very often we need to have those coming back to Jesus moments. And we realize that not only did we hurt ourselves, but we really hurt the one that we love and we care for. Now let's look a little bit at the Ten Commandments because I think that's a great way for us to reflect on the sacrament of confession. For the, so the first commandment, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. So the important thing, Jesus sums it up, we talk about faith, hope, love, and the greatest of these is love. What's the greatest commandment? Love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. So the Ten Commandments, the first few commandments are going to deal with us and our relationship with God. And then the rest of the commandments are going to deal with us and our relationships with others. So if you've ever looked at things like a horoscope, you need to go and confess that. It, then let's take a look at the second commandment. And that's you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. So, very often, this refers to using foul language. And how often do we say, oh, F this or what or what not. And we use foul language. That's something we need to bring up in confession. And we need to talk about the difference between a bad word and a curse. Because a curse is a, is a real strict sin. Whereas bad language is a sin, but we also need to confess that too. But there is a difference. So for example, the curse of the Babino. That's a curse. When you say the F word or something else, that's using foul language. Let's look at the third commandment. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. So, ultimately, do you go to Mass on Sunday? Not some Sundays, not most Sundays, every Sunday. Because that's our obligation as Christians. And if you have it, you need to bring that up. So, this says the church law obli obliges Catholics to participate in Mass on Sundays and Holy Days. To deliberately miss Mass is a grave sin. To be excused from attendance requires a weighty reason, such as a serious illness or grave inconvenience. For example, like natural disasters or being dispensed by one's pastor. The fourth commandment. Honor your father and mother. So it's important to honor your parents. You only have two. God gave them to you and to try to love them. One of the great things that we need to remember is that God gives us our parents in the first few years of our life. We think they're superheroes. And then as we continue through life, we say, oh, wow, I see all of their weaknesses, that they're not perfect. And then as we get older, we start to realize, how did they do it? I, I have no idea how they were able to do it. So honor your parents. God gave them to you. Make sure you honor God by honoring them. And very often we can play the blame game of it's not me, it's that person. It's not that person, it's that person. And we shouldn't be doing that. If we're doing that, we need to bring it up. The fifth commandment, thou shall not kill. And yes, killing could be referring to direct killing somebody or it could be your own body. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. When we do, if you're doing things like taking drugs or misusing alcohol, you need to bring that up because these things can become addictions. It can start off small and it can really consume you. The sixth commandment, thou shall not commit adultery. Need I say more? Adultery is for married people, but for teens, an important thing to think about is and realize is if we are looking at online pornography, we need to mention that in confession. 
because that's something that can become an addiction and it could really harm our understanding of others whom we're supposed to love. We're told that the perfect man has to look a particular way and the perfect woman has to look a particular way. And if we fall short of it, we're ugly. God made each of us. He made us good. He made us wonderful. And he made us beautiful in our own way. And we need to try to be able to really accept ourselves for who we are, not for who we desire to be. The seventh commandment, thou shalt not steal. It could mean literally stealing something. If you're shoplifting, you need to confess that. But I think one of the things that we do the most of, especially for high school students, is that we waste time. We waste time in class. We waste our parents' time who often pay for our education or pay for our school books or whatever it is. And we don't use those resources to the best of our ability. And so if we're wasting time, we need to bring that up because it can't be regained, but we can look at it and say, I want to do better in the future. The eighth commandment. And very often we see here the blame game. And just as a reminder, the eighth commandment is thou shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And here we see a wonderful Norman Rockwell painting of the blame game of bearing false witness. But if you notice, the person who's starting it off at the front is the one at the end receiving it and going, oh boy. Very often people, we can dish it out, but what are people saying about us too? Because if we need to be men and women whose words mean something, we need to say what we mean and mean what we say. The ninth commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. So what does that mean? Well, for teens, is it, am I, do I accept my family? Do I love them with all of their imperfections? Do I love them for who they are? And do I really try to love them, accept them, and move forward and say, thank you, God, for my family? And the 10th commandment, thou shall not covet your neighbor's goods. And one of the things for, te for teens is I want more. I'm not happy with what I have. I want more. I want that iPhone. I want the newest shoes. I want the newest whatever it is. But to say I need to be happy with what I have because I have what I have and I'm not going to have everything. And it's not a realistic expectation for me to say I gotta have everything I have to try to be happy with what I have now let's look at the steps for confession the first thing is we have to recollect we have to think about what are our sins the Ten Commandments are a good broad stroke but what are those areas in our life that we're really struggling with and then to go into the confessional to confess your sins and to keep calm it's gonna be okay it's not a torture chamber it's a place where we meet God's mercy as Pope Francis tells us then after we finish confessing our sins, the priest is going to give us some advice. He's going to share with us. And after that, he's going to give you a penance, so some prayers to say. And then after that, you're going to say your act of contrition. And then you leave the confessional and you do what the priest asks you to do for penance, if you could do it during that time. And if you're unable to, or if it's a really hard penance that you have a hard time with, you can always go to the priest and say, Father, that's really tough for me. Can you give me something else to do? And he will. So I hope this helps with the sacrament of confession. I look forward to seeing you. And re please remember to comment, like, subscribe to our channel. And I want to thank you for being with us today. And if you have any questions, remember to verify, priest verify. This is Father Michael Aguino. God bless.